Hey guys, and welcome to Should You Buy It, where all we do is talk a little bit about the game and whether or not we think it's worth the cost. In this episode, we'll be playing Grounded, the survival adventure game where you and up to three friends have been shrunk down to the size of an ant. You will have to adventure forth into the unknown world of the backyard and figure out how to get back to normal, all while trying not to die of starvation, thirst, and the many vicious insects that lurk among you. So the first question that we always cover in these videos is what stage of development is the game in? And in this case, Grounded is currently in early access and available on PC or Xbox for $30. So what exactly is Grounded? Well, Grounded is a survival game with a Honey I Shrunk the Kids feel to it. You spawn into the world not knowing what's going on and must figure out how to survive the perils of the backyard. Starting off, let's talk about the main premise of the game, which is survival. The survival aspect has a nice curve to it. It starts off by having you focus on basic things, such as food and water. Early on, these things are hard to come by, until you have a good feel for the game. I believe it wasn't until we were about an hour or more into it that we figured out how to maintain both our hunger and thirst meter, to the point where we were able to focus more on the explorative, progression, and story parts of the game. Speaking of which, let's talk about the exploration in Grounded. Grounded's exploration is simple, yet absolutely amazing. For an example, they really nailed that feeling of not knowing how things are from the perspective of a creature that's the size of an ant. Just to give you an example here, let's say you're one centimeter tall and there's a stink bug nearby. If that thing is three to four times your size, it will require you to either outsmart it or work as a team in order to take it down. Now they also added a nice feature alongside the map where you can identify the landmarks that you have found in the past. These will then be represented by a small icon on your map in order to help you navigate your way around the backyard. Now you might think to yourself, what would a landmark in a backyard look like? Well, how about a baseball? Maybe a soda can? Or even a rake that you can climb all the way up and see the world that surrounds you? All of these things have some sort of purpose in the world, and some landmarks are even related to the story. As always, we won't spoil anything important for you here, but we are going to talk briefly about the story. So if you don't want even the tiniest of details spoiled for you, then please go ahead and pause the video and click over to the time in the description. So the general concept of the story is that you've been shrunken down and must find a way to get back to normal size. This is achieved through various means, such as completing quests, or finding hidden places around the map. Now the story of the game is pretty well put together. They don't do things like MMOs or Skyrim and say, go collect me 10 paws and I'll give you a reward. Instead, they give you hints as to where you need to go and what you need to do in order to progress. I don't want to say too much more though, but I'll just end this section on saying that the story in this game was easily our favorite part and made it stand out among similar games, like Raft, for example. Next up, let's talk about the game's progression system. Now, unfortunately, there is still a lot of progression that just has not been completed and grounded at the time of recording this video, as it is still in early access. However, the progression that is currently available is extremely solid. It allows you to start out with something simple like pebble tools and clover armor, but it gives you tons of options to progress as you discover more and more recipes throughout the game's science system. Now we don't want to say too much though, as it does relate to the story, but just know, basically you research materials and those will give you new recipes to make better and more complicated tools, weaponry, and other various items. A good example of this would be how that you start out the game with next to nothing and begin to progress towards things like spider armor and weapons, stink bug armor, and even things like gas masks made out of your friendly neighborhood bugs. This will allow you to explore new areas of the map, such as things like the toxic bug spray wasteland that has tons of infested bugs just waiting to kill you. Finally, we did just want to talk about the controls on PC. They do feel a little weird, and the game definitely feels like it wasn't made for a mouse and keyboard, 
but instead for a controller. They weren't awful by any means, but I definitely think they could have used a bit more polish, so if you do plan on playing this on PC, then I would say just try giving the game a chance on the controller if that's an option for you, otherwise you'll be fine, it just takes a bit more time to get used to it. So now let's move into the pros and cons section for the game. First off for the pros, we have that the storyline was incredibly well done. It always felt like you were progressing and didn't hold your hand all the way through, which allowed you to explore and figure things out on your own. We also want to reiterate that it has not been completed yet because the game is in early access. Next up, we have that the graphics and Grounded were unique and quite relaxing. However, this didn't take away from the intense moments of, say, a giant wolf spider popping out and scaring the living daylights out of us. Finally, we have that the crafting system in the game felt well put together and rewarding. For example, the ant armor set bonus allowed you to carry more items, which was a nice perk that we were not expecting to find in a game this early on. Now let's go ahead and move on to the con section. First up is that the multiplayer is just a bit unstable at the time of recording, which resulted in us having a few bugs such as things glitching into walls or things being no contest when you were fighting them. It really wasn't anything game breaking or major, but it was definitely noticeable. Lastly for the cons, we have that the content available at the time of purchase was pretty low for the price tag. It took us about 10 hours to complete the entire story, and after that, the game really just didn't have too much to offer other than just building massive structures that didn't really benefit you in any way. So that brings us to our rating, and when we rate games, we want to get one hour of enjoyment out of every one dollar that we spend on the game. So for this game in particular, in Grounded, we would want to get roughly 30 hours of enjoyment out of the 30 dollars that we both spent. And after putting 24 played hours into this game, we give it 7 out of 10 potatoes. Yeah, I mean, honestly, Grounded was a great game. It had everything that we were looking for in a survival game. However, when we were recording this video, it did not take us long to complete the main storyline, and the core content was minimal, which was why we gave it the rating that we did. The time we did have with the game, though, was an absolute blast, but we would recommend waiting until it is at least in full release if you are wanting to get that 30 hours out of it. As of right now, the gameplay is great overall, it's just that the content is a bit lacking. Now if you want more money saving content, consider subscribing to our channel where we release new videos every single week where we spend the money so you don't have to. Make sure you guys smash that like button and as always, thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time.